So, cellular biology without light is, is better without voice. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so we're getting to the grand finale of the, <laughs> of the uh, preparatory school. And yes. The, the, the final act is. Mm. Uh, not so good, <laughs> not so good. <laughs> Very good. Introduction <laughs> to Cellular Biology by Professor Indrana Ashraf. Sahib. Thank you. You have presented me <laughs> eventually. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so we will do a brief introduction of uh, cellular biology and uh, I will look for the help with those uh, people who have done degree in engineering, genetic engineering and so. Okay, uh, brief introduction, uh, what is a living organism? Two kinds of uh, living cells, which is uh, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. The basis of cell, uh, basic components of cell, its nucleus, these uh, structures, specified structures are called organelles and then cell nucleus. Then I will give a brief introduction of DNA structure and its function. Then we will do the final uh, bit of uh, pre what is a protein because I thought that might, uh, we might need this for green fluorescence protein because protein is a part of cell. Okay, so millions of different types of organism uh, on earth has at least one thing in common. What is that? That they are made of cell. Cell is the smallest and the basic unit of uh, life that is uh, classified as the living. Cell is an independent uh, uh, entity capable of creating copies of uh, itself by growing and dividing into two daughter cells. So it provides structure for the body, take into nutrients from food, convert it into energy and can do or can perform a specialized function. If a cell is a part of your nerve system or brain or heart, so they are specified to do uh, things related to that part of uh, the body. So each cell stores its own set of instruction for carry, uh, carry out uh, each of these activities. Cells are very small. For example, a bacterium which is consists of a single cell has a uh, diameter of one micron. But there are cells which are very uh, heavy like uh, an ostrich egg is the largest cell which is uh, whose weight is almost two pounds or at some places they say that it is uh, three pound and longest cell is uh, the human nerve cell which is around two meter. So we human are made of trillions of cells and uh, there are smaller pieces of cell that include organelles. So like we know that uh, in a molecule or in an atom, atom is consist of nucleus and electrons orbiting around that molecule is consist of different kinds of atoms and group of atoms. Similarly, uh, the cell is not, is the basic unit, but it con it's consist of small uh, structures, specified structures, which are called organelles. Okay, there are two main types of cell we encounter with, uh, in life. One is called the animal-like cell, the other is called the plant-like cell. So animal cell can be a skin cell, it can be a muscle cell, it can be a fat cell, and this is a nerve cell. So uh, they are a tiny microorganism to a nerve cell in a human brain. Humans may have hundreds of different types of uh, cells, like I mentioned before, and some, uh, some cells are used to carry out oxygen through the blood, uh, and these are called red blood cells, and the others are, might be specific to heart or your brain or these things. So animal cell can be a small organism that we will see in a minute. So the plant-like cells are, they, you easily identify them because uh, they have a protective uh, layer outside which is called uh, cell wall or it is made of uh, cellulose. And then they contain uh, uh, organelles like the chloroplast and very large water-filled vacuoles. We will see that uh, plant has big vacuoles and the animal cell have very tiny uh, uh, vacuoles. Okay, so living, they can say that uh, Life started almost 4 billion years ago. The first uh, living things uh, is the bacteria around 3.5 billion years ago. And we divide living organism in two classes. One is prokaryotes, the other one is eukaryotes. So prokaryotes are usually independent and unicellular. And the, what is the main difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes is that uh, prokaryotes doesn't have uh, this nucleus. And eukaryotes are complex multicellular organisms 
we animals, plants, and fungi are part of uh, eukaryotes. They also include unicellular organisms such as yeast and uh, amoeba. Sorry, prokaryotes doesn't have a nucleus, but eukaryotes have nucleus. Okay, so th these are the simplest and the first type of organism to evolve on Earth about four uh, billion years ago. Contains organisms whose cell do not contain a nucleus. It doesn't have a nucleus. Lack most of the intracellular organelles and structures, but an important exception is uh, ribosome. We will see what ribosome does in a minute. So most function of organelles such as the mitochondria, chloroplast, and Golgi operators are taken over by prokaryotes plasma membrane. Plasma membrane is the outer uh, shelling of that prokaryote cell. So then uh, I'll give you, I will show you this uh, instead of reading that. This is a bacteria which is a unicellular organism without any nucleus. It is an example of uh, prokaryotes. It is consist of, this is a cell wall. It is a capsule-like, then it has some, uh, the inner part of this cell is called cytoplasm. Then it has a big uh, flagellum by, with the help of that it moves around and it has a DNA but not inside the nucleus. It is just in the cytoplasm. This uh, DNA is uh, present there. Then they, it has a plasma membrane, uh, membrane which carry out most of the uh, things of this uh, such as are taken over by the prokaryote plasma membrane. So uh, it, uh, instead of those organelles, it uses its plasma membrane to uh, perform many functions. So this was the example of a prokaryote cell. Then uh, we ha there are different kinds of uh, eukaryotes uh, organisms. There are uh, animals, plants, fungi, and protests. So animal and plants are the most f uh, familiar uh, eukaryote cells. And fungi and protests have many substantial differences. The cell of eukaryote organisms are complex and contain a nucleus and other membrane-bounded structures. Different cell, uh, uh, cells in a eukaryote organism like human look and function differently, like I showed you this uh, cartoon. So where is that animal like? So these all uh, look and function differently cells from nerve, red blood cell, uh, epithel cell, they all work and look differently. So, fungi is a decomposer of dead animals and uh, plant matter. It breaks dead organic matters simple, into simple compounds that can be absorbed by plants around it. During this, uh, fungi returns carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So green plants use the carbon dioxide during photosynthesis to produce food. So oxygen is released into the atmosphere during the process of photosynthesis. So animal and hum human life depends on fungi for survival because the, it decomposes, it produces uh, carbon dioxide which is used by the plants to and they convert uh, or they produce oxygen. So we human needs oxygen. So uh, some fungi like mushrooms are used as ingredient in recipes. So this is another example of a unicellular uh, uh, eukaryote uh, protester, the ancestor of plants, animal, and fungi. They may have been around as long as two billion years ago. It is an organism made of a single cell, yet it can live, eat, reproduce like other living things. So one, one of the most fascinating protest is the amoeba, I think. When we start reading this biology, this was the first example my teacher gave me, okay, amoeba and the bacteria. So uh, these are the eukaryote plant cells. The plant cells uh, have membrane. I think I should go to the photo. So this is a, a typical plant cell. You can find many photos on the net. I used, uh, of course, it's not my field. I uh, took advantage of uh, web. and took some uh, photos from there. So it has a plasma membrane. Then it has Golgi operators. We will see what is a Golgi operators. Then it has a mitochondria, the chloroplast I already mentioned. And then it has a vacuole, which is quite heavy. And if you uh, water the plant, it gets bigger and bigger, and it gives the shape and structure to that uh, plant cell. So then it has some uh, endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, and uh, I'll give 
the definition of these things. So if you want to see the details that plants have membrane includes nuclei and organelles. Its chloroplast contains chlorophyll, gives plants their green color, enables them to use uh, sunlight to convert water and uh, carbon dioxide into sugars and carbohydrates during a process which is called photosynthesis. Vacuole is a membrane-bound sac, plays role in intracellular digestion to release, uh, uh, and, and they release the cellular waste products. And vacuoles tend to be large in plant cells. Typical uh, is a 50% of cell, yet it can take up to 95% of a cell. It is responsible for maintaining the shape and structure of the cell. You can see that this is quite big. As, uh, by, it contains the whole, uh, almost 50% of this plant cell. Or if you are watering the plant, it can take up, uh, up to 95% of that plant cell. So human cell, each of the 100 trillion cell in human being is a living structure. So they can survive for months or years provided the surrounding fluid contain appropriate nutrients. So to understand the function of organs and other structure of the body, so we need to understand the basic organization of the cell and its other different compounds, uh, components, and these kind of things. So a typical cell has two major parts, the nucleus and the cytoplasm. So nucleus is separated uh, from the cytoplasm by a nuclear membrane, and cytoplasm is separated from the surrounding molecules and the fluid by a cell membrane, which is called plasma membrane. So the different substances that make up the cell are collectively called uh, protoplasm. So it is composed of, uh, it has different kinds of nutrients like water, ions, proteins, lipid, and carbohydrates. So Basically, you can divide an animal cell into two parts. One is the nucleus, the other outer jelly-like structure is called cytoplasm, and all the uh, organelles are in that cytoplasm. So this is a kind of a fluid, which uh, a nutrient which is uh, present in the protoplasm or in the cytoplasm. So water is the principal fluid of the cell, present in most uh, cells except fat cell. Concentration of water is 75 to 85%. Many cellular uh, chemicals are dissolved in water. Other are suspended in it as a solid particle. For example, fat has not been dissolved in water, so it is uh, suspended in that. So then there are some ions. That most important ion in cell is potassium, magnesium, phosphate, sulfate, and bicarbonate that helps to in digestion, in the respiratory systems, and other kind of processes. So smaller entities of uh, sodium, chloride, and calcium are also present. These ions provide inorganic chemicals for cellular reactions. Okay, then we have proteins, and uh, it's very important. And after water, the most abundant substance in most cells are proteins. They normally constitute 10 to 20 percent of a cell. We divide proteins into two types. One is the structural protein, and the other one is the functional protein. So st the structural protein is the form of large filament, make microtubules that provide cytoskeleton. I will explain what is a cytoskeleton to the cellular organ organelles. And functional proteins, mainly the enzymes that cell uh, 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 use for different purposes, and uh, they can mobile in cell fluid, catalyze uh, specific chemical reactions. So then we have lipid. Lipids is uh, usually grouped together because of their common property of being soluble in fat solvents only. They are not soluble in water. So important uh, lipids is uh, phospholipids and uh, cholesterols. Constitute only 2% of total cell mass. Some cells contain lipid, neutral fat, that is uh, almost 95% uh, of fat cell. Then we have carbohydrates, and this is the same ratio. So carbohydrate is a form of glucose that is present in extracellular uh, fluids, and glycogen is uh, another form of carbohydrates present in that. So this is a kind of uh, an example of an animal cell. It is, this is the plasma membrane. Then we have endoplasmic rec reticulum. It is this kind of uh, tubes. Then we have a nucleus. Ribosomes, uh, lysosomes, uh, my, uh, my, uh, mitochondria, Golgi operators. So there are the basic is cell membrane, cytoplasm, and cytoskeleton. Then we have different organelles, 
which I will show you in uh, the coming slides, that uh, the basic is the cell membrane, the first thing. It is the outer lining of uh, eukaryotic cells and it's called the plasma membrane. It separates and protects the cell from its surrounding environment. It is uh, made of a double layer of proteins and lipids. You can see these are me membrane protein and this is a cholesterol, which is a uh, lipid. So uh, then there are variety of molecules that are embedded within it that act as a channel and pumps moving different molecules into and out of the cell. Like uh, during the uh, cell division or during uh, uh, other processes, they help uh, cell to get uh, into uh, this uh, different uh, uh, nutrients move into and out of this cell membrane. Okay, then we have cytoplasm. It is uh, the second part of uh, this cell. Okay, uh, cytoplasm. Uh, this is this jelly-like structure in which all other uh, organelles are present. So um, it holds the organelles in place within the cell. It contains uh, dissolved nutrients, mainly protein, electrolytes, and glucose. It helps to break down waste products. The nucleus flows with the cytoplasm, changing its shape as it moves. So the function of cytoplasm, the organelles which reside in our, uh, it are critical for a uh, cell structure. So this is the uh, cytoskeleton because you can see that it helps to retain uh, the shape of the cell, uh, to organize and maintain the cell shelf, anchors organelles in place, move parts of the cell in process of growth and mobility. The eukaryotic uh, cytoskeleton is composed of microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and microtubes. So these are, uh, this is the plasma membrane. This, these are the filaments. You can see this is a microtubulate. Uh, so they uh, give shape and, uh, to this uh, uh, eukaryotic cell. There is a great number of protein associated with them, each controlling a cell structure by directing, bundling, and aligning filaments. Okay, so my God, my student put this slide and they make it. So the human body contains many different organs such as heart, lungs, and, uh, and which each organ uh, perform a different function. Similarly, the cell has uh, organelles which are the small uh, specified structures like we saw this mitochondria, Golgi operators and uh, different uh, we will see in a minute. So membrane bound organelles are found only in eukaryotic cells because uh, prokaryotic doesn't have any uh, uh, membrane bounded structure. They even don't have this uh, nucleus. Okay, so this is the centriole or the cylindrical structure found in animal cell. They help during the cell division in both uh, mitosis and meiosis, we will see what is a uh, uh, cell division by using mitosis and meiosis. They are found near the nucleus. They cannot be seen when cell is not dividing. It's uh, only visible when the cell is dividing. So then we have endoplasmic reticulum. They have two types. One is the rough. Rough uh, has a ribosome all over its outer surface. The endoplasmic reticulum is where protein and lipids are produced. They produce protein and lipids, and it is also concerned with the transport of these material within the cell. So smooth uh, endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for generating new layers for the Golgi bodies. Golgi bodies are also called Golgi operators in uh, different books and so this is the Golgi operators. Each, uh, I will show you the picture of this. It looks like this, right. So each cell contains a number of Golgi operators or bodies. Golgi operators are like little stacks of hollow membrane pancakes. Function is to produce materials arrive from the smooth uh, endoplasmic reticulum, pack product into uh, small structures that are called Golgi vehicles. So uh, they process material that come from this uh, endoplasmic reticulum and then pack that material and uh, uh, in small vehicles, which is called Golgi vesicles. Two types of Golgi vesicles, uh, which is microbodies and secretory vesicles. So microbodies remain in the cell, contain usually enzymes needed by the cell for different kind of reactions, but remain packaged away from the cells. Other kind. The best known uh, microbody is the lysosome. 
Okay, this is the structure of uh, this Golgi operators or the Golgi body. So, these are the vesicles. Okay, uh, basically they are the small interest, uh, cellular membrane enclosed sac that store or transport substances, the things which are produced by the endoplasmic uh, uh, reticulum or which are produced in the Golgi, the uh, body is uh, separated from cytosol by at least one lipid bilayer. Basic, these are the basic tool organizing uh, metabol uh, metabolism and the transport and the storage of enzyme. So vesicles made in the Golgi operators are uh, and in the endoplasmic reticulum or from the parts of the plasma membrane. These transport vehicles can move protein from uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi. So they act as a uh, transporter between uh, endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi bodies. So then we have this uh, lysosome. It is uh, synthesized by the endoplasmic reticulum again and the com uh, Golgi complex. So lysosomes are tiny sacs almost of uh, 500 nanometer in size filled with digestive enzymes that enables the cell to utilize its uh, nutrients. So lysosomes uh, also destroy the cell after it is dead. So due to the disease or condition, if the cell is uh, not working properly, they, uh, these lysosomes help to uh, uh, kill that cell properly. Okay. So these are uh, kind of hair-like, finger-like projections on the outer surface of the cell. Not all cell has microvilli. So function is the diffusion of material both into and out of the cells. They are particularly apparent on the surface of absorptive and secretive cells. So now the mitochondria, it is called the cell powerhouse. It produces, uh, often referred to as the power plant of the cell. The, reac uh, the reaction that produces energy take place in uh, mitochondria. The quantity of mitochondria, each cell can have different numbers of mitochondria. And if uh, more energy is needed, the more mitochondria are present in that cell. So then again, uh, the cell vacuole, we, uh, vacuoles are mem uh, membrane bound sacs within the cytoplasm of the cell that function in several different ways. Vacuoles in animal cell tend to be much smaller than as, uh, or uh, smaller than the plant-like cell because in plant we saw that vacuole uh, almost occupies 50% of a plant cell. More commonly used to temporarily store materials or transport substances. Okay, this is the nucleus. Uh, the cell nucleus is found in uh, eukaryotic cells because prokaryote uh, cell don't don't have this um, uh, nucleus or, uh, in fact, any uh, membrane bounded structure. Oops. So it is spherical in shape, separated from the cytoplasm by a double nuclear membrane. So this is the membrane. Contain a nuclear pole that permits nutrient waste and cellular information to pass both into and out of uh, the nucleus. So this is the nucleus. The nucleus is the control center that contains DNA or ge uh, genetic information for the formation of proteins. So in prokaryotes, DNA processing take place in the cytoplasm because they don't have any nucleus, they don't have any membrane uh, bounded uh, organelles. So it's uh, processing take place in the cytoplasm of the prokaryotic cells. So the nucleus, a uh, dense spherical structure within the nucleus of the cell, it's, uh, it contain a ribonucleic acid, which is RNA for the synthesis of ribosomes. It has an important role in the production of protein and RNA. The uh, nucleus is a part of nucleus of the cell that disappears during cell division. So it again disappears during the cell division. So the ribosomes, the protein producing machine, each cell contains thousands of uh, ribosomes. These are the miniature protein factories. Uh, composes 25% of cell mass. They are this, there are stationary type which are embedded in uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum. Mobile type injects uh, proteins directly into cytoplasm. So if it is uh, produced in uh, ribosome, so uh, they carried uh, 
and inject them into the cytoplasm so that the protein is needed for the well-being of that cell. The formation of a new protein molecule from amino acid based on information encoded in our DNA and RNA. So one thing that all human cells have in common from brain, eye, muscle, skin cell is that they contain DNA and DNA is called the blueprint of life. So D, uh, DNA stands for? Deoxy? Deox uh, it is acid. Okay. So it is deoxyribonucleic acid. So deoxy means that it lacks one of the oxygen or hydro. So DNA found within the nucleus of eukary uh, eukaryotic uh, organisms. In 1940s, DNA identified as the carrier of genetic information. So Any question? I heard some. OK. S uh, contains the instruction for a cell, determines how animal human characteristics are passed from one generation to the another, whether a person has blue eye or brown, whether he or she has dark or blonde hair is determined by DNA. So this is the building block of the DNA molecule are called nucleotides. So these are uh, uh, four nucleotides which make a structure of DNA. Nucleotides link together into a chain by covalent bonding. So of the DNA strand, this the bonding between these uh, four, this is adenine, thiamine, uh, guanine, and cytosine. So these are the main nucleotides of our DNA. So this double helix structure of um, molecule was discovered in 1953. The two strands of DNA molecule held together by hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is the bonding between hydrogen and an electronegative uh, atom. So that can be uh, this one. So each nucleotide is composed of three parts. The, it is a, a deoxyribose sugar then a phosphate group, and then a nitrogen base. The oxyribose molecule occupies the center position in the nucleotide, a phosphate group on one side, and the base is on the other side. So I think we can see this is a, a deoxyribose uh, sugar. It is a pentose, uh, uh, pentose uh, a five carbon sugar, and you can see uh, carbon, one carbon is here, the second is here, third, fourth, and fifth carbon is here. And you can see this is called deoxyribose because there is no oxygen connecting this uh, carbon, which is at position two. This is the uh, third has this O, one has this oxygen, four has this oxygen, five has this oxygen. So one of the oxygen at uh, uh, position two is missing. So four carbons and an oxygen make up the five membered ring. The DNA uh, sugar is called a deoxy because it is lacking a hydroxyl group at the two position. So the phosphate group is the second part of the backbone of DNA molecules. So uh, a phosphate group acts as a bridge between adjacent uh, deoxyribose sugar, which carries in turn the nitrogen bases. The end of the chain on which the phosphate is exposed is uh, called the five prime and and because the phosphate binds to the carbon on the fifth position, as you can see from this, that at fifth position, it is combined with the phosphate group. So uh, if uh, it ends, the chain which phosphate is exposed is called five prime. And because phosphate binds to the carbon at the DNA is always read from five prime to three prime. So this is, I think I have a photo of, okay. Ooh. So this is a five end here. You can see this is the phosph it ends at uh, phosphate group. And this is uh, end three where it, uh, uh, there is no phosphate group. So let's go back and there are two classes of nitrogen bases. One is purine and the other one is uh, pyrimidines. Uh, the purines are characterized by their double ringed structure. So these are adenine and guanine are purines and pyrimidines are uh, have a single ring the cytosine and thiamine are uh, these uh, pyrimidines. So the number of purine bases equal the number of pyrimidines bases in a, this nitrogen uh, base. 
so uh, the base do not pair uh, at random is complementary to T and two hydrogen bonds between A and T. So this is A is complementary, it always binds with uh, T and C is complementary to G. So three hydrogen bonds are present uh, uh, between uh, C and G, guanine and uh, cytosine. So the hydrogen bond is 20 times weaker than the covalent bond. Okay, the two ends of DNA stands are chemically different as I explained earlier because this is called the five prime end and this is called the three prime end. The one end is a five prime terminates with a phosphate group attached to the fifth carbon on the two. The second end is the three prime, uh, prime three terminates with hydroxy group on the third carbon on the sugar ring. So uh, this is the, uh, the prime, three prime end, the other one is uh, five prime end. Okay, the human DNA is uh, almost 1.5 to 2 meters long. Uh, the nucleus diameter is uh, 6 micrometer. So DNA must be compact to fit in nucleus. So DNA must be organized enough to become re uncoiled, to be replicated and transcribed. So the DNA packed along with protein histones complex form of chromatin. The continuous folding of uh, chromatin is called, the, uh, it is the, this portion is called the chromosomes and some organisms have only one chromosome and we human have 23 pair of chromosomes. So humans are deployed, each cell has two copies of each chromosome, one from each parent. So the entire genetic material is called genome. So how the replication of DNA take place? DNA replication is the production of two complete identical double helix for, from one original DNA molecule. So it splits and you can see the one arrow is going down, the other arrow is going up. So in a eukaryotic uh, DNA replication must happen before the cell division so that uh, it, they have their own set of DNA. So uh, prokaryotes replicate their DNA throughout the interval between cell division. So enzymes like protein catalyze biochemical reactions which are uh, essential for DNA replication. So DNA stand is separated forming a Y-shape uh, uh, jo joint. This is a kind of Y-shape uh, junction called replication fork for enzymes. So a short DNA segment called the premier uh, base pair, the template by pre premier enzymes. There are different kinds of enzymes which are involved in the replication of this. So basically what these enzymes do is that they attach with this uh, separated fork, the nucleotides according to uh, seem that uh, adenine is uh, complementary to thiamine and uh, the other one is complementary to guanine. So, uh, Finally, DNA chromatase uh, enzyme synthesize a new DNA strand by adding free nucleotides. Nucleotides were uh, those A, T, C, G. An error in new, uh, DNA molecule is called mutation. So DNA polymerase has ability to do the proofreading. So the rate of error is very uh, low, one per 10, uh, 10 raised to power nine bases. So it is uh, very rare to have uh, a mutation. The replication fork is asymmetrical. One new DNA strand is formed on template running from three prime to five prime, that is called the leading strand. The other is formed on template running from five prime to three prime, the lagging strand. Okay, so a gene is a sanction, uh, sanction of a DNA strand that carries the instruction for a specific function. So how a, a section of DNA gives instruction? In any language we know that uh, words seldom convey complete or understandable information. For that we need a set of words that com, uh, convey a complete thought in the form of a sentence. So DNA language consists of four words. Each word is a single unit of DNA molecule that is the nucleotide and those are those H, T, C, and G. So each sentence is uh, a large string of nucleotides called a gene. So in order, uh, the gene is basically a combination of A, T, C, G uh, in a particular order. 
the, that codes for a defined biochemical function, usually through the production of particular protein. So the transformation of gene into a protein is called an expression. So genes have specific jobs at specific time. Not all genes are turned on all the time. For example, something, a gene has instruction to reproduce. It will be active only when there is a time for repro uh, reproduction or cell division or they are not on all the time. So cells are, okay, I will be, I'm very quick. I deleted many slides. <laughs> So cells are capable of synthesizing new protein based on the information encoded in DNA and RNA. So proteins are the biological molecules give living cells forms and functions. So protein synthesizes generally, uh, protein synthesis generally consists of two major steps, transcription and translation. So transcription is DNA information copied into RNA and then RNA m uh, moves uh, and the proteins are synthesized using the information in RNA as a template. So from DNA, RNA copies some information and then it uh, take to the ribosomes and they produce uh, uh, proteins and the message has been transferred uh, from the DNA to uh, protein. So both nucleic acid, that is the DNA, are, are sugar uh, phosphate, polymers, nitrogen bases attached to the sugar of the backbone. They differ in composition. The sugar in RNA is ribose, not the deoxyribose, because it has uh, oxygen at even position two. And they have base uracils present in RNA instead of thiamine. They don't have thiamine, they have uh, uracils. So they also differ in size and structure. RNA molecules are smaller or shorter than the DNA molecules. RNA is single strand, not double strand like DNA. So they differ in function too. DNA has only one function, storing genetic information in its sequence of nucleotide bases, but there are three main kinds of function for RNA each of which has a specific uh, job to do. So RNA has uh, three types and it has a specific job. All three types have different jobs to do, while DNA has only one job to uh, store the genetic information. So there are uh, three kinds of uh, RNA. Ribosomal RNAs ex exist outside the nucleus and uh, in the structures called ribosome, which produce proteins, a complex uh, consisting of about 60% ribosomal RNA and 40% of protein. Then there is a messenger uh, RNA. The uh, nucleic acid records information from DNA. This part of RNA records information from DNA in the cell nucleus carried to the ribosomes known as the messenger RNA. Then there is a transfer RNA. The function of transfer RNA is to deliver amino acid one by one to protein chains growing at ribosomes. Ribosomes are machines that make uh, protein. And uh, this uh, transfer RNA actually carries a different amino acid to the ribosome to make, uh, to carry out the uh, protein synthesis. Okay, now we will move to cell division. So, yeah, I have a problem. Hmm. So there are two kinds of cell division. One is called meiosis and the other one is called mitosis. So anybody knows genetic engineer part? So for unicellular organism, uh, reproduction is a cell duplication because amoeba, bacteria, they, uh, they do the duplication and that is a cell reproduction. By replicating all their parts and then splitting into two cells by binary fusion. This is a method in which they uh, duplicate and then divide into two uh, daughter cells. This process not just give two new cells but also two two new organisms.
for multicellular or organisms, cell reproduct replication and reproduction are two separate process. This is mitosis, uh, it is replication, just the cell is replicated and then it divides into two. And uh, meiosis is the reproduction. So it is, uh, it reproduces and uh, divides the chromosome and every kind of this thing. So multicellular uh, organisms replace damaged cell through replication process and this is called mitosis. Mitosis is process uh, by which the uh, deployed nucleus like we human have are deployed because we have uh, two sets of chromosomes, one from each parent, uh, homologous chromosomes that is the same gene of the cell divided to produce two genetically identical daughter nuclei, both still deployed. So this is the replication, so in which uh, this is uh, uh, DNA uh, set of, this is a deployed uh, structure because it has one uh, chromosome from one parent and the other from the other parent and then they uh, did the replication and you have two daughter cells with the same uh, uh, two kinds of uh, chromosome or uh, DNAs. So in uh, uh, meiosis is the multicellular reproduce new or, uh, organisms through a process that is called uh, meiosis. A deployed uh, uh, somatic cell undergo meiosis to produce haploid cells. Now these terminologies are really very different from for me. So this is a same kind of uh, uh, reproduction processes we human do. That uh, there is a egg cell, there is a, a sperm cell, and then its uh, division take place, and eventually you have uh, daughter nuclei. So meiosis reduces the chromosome number by half. So now the question is, what is protein? Protein is the principal constituent of cells that drives most of its function. Proteins are composed of linear chains, which is called polypeptides of amino acids, linked with peptide base bonds. So uh, these are 20 different kinds of amino acids and they are uh, joined together with the help of ribosomes which produce these uh, under the instruction of DNA carried out by RNA to ribosome and then order of amino acid in protein molecules determine its structure and function because if the order and uh, arrangement is different that protein will perform some different kind of uh, function. So protein may serve as enzymes that make new molecule and catalyze nearly all chemical reactions. Then uh, hormones, they transmit signals throughout the body. So then they have protein, all, uh, protein also makes structural components that gives cell their shape and help them to move. So they also produce antibodies that uh, attack or uh, uh, defend uh, cell against any kind of antigens. So they also transport molecules or uh, they carry oxygen and take oxygen where, uh, where it is needed. So proteins have a different function and all uh, it's uh, always made up of uh, amino acid and there are only 20 amino acid just the arrangement is different and uh, then their function is different. So these are the amino acid. Amino acids are the subunits of protein. The chain of uh, amino acid takes on different shape to form different proteins. So if the chain is different, of course, it will uh, be a different protein, but there are only 20 amino acids. So various shapes allow protein to take different characteristic in cell. All amino acid found in proteins have same basic structure, differing only in the structure of the R group. So this is a kind of R group in this uh, amino acid chain. So if this is different, the protein will be different. The simplest and the smallest amino acid is uh, glycine. The R group is an hydrogen. So a chain-like molecule of amino acid is called polypeptide. So these all terminologies are also new for me. Okay, not new, but uh, it's uh, hard to remember them. So protein synthesis generally consists of uh, two major steps. What are the two major steps? It's transcription and translation. Transcription is the transferring the code from DNA to RNA. So one strand of DNA double 
helix is used as a template by the RNA polymerase to synthesize uh, messenger RNA. As I uh, told you before, this is a bit complicated slide, but this is a double helix. Uh, this red is a DNA. So it splits from here, and this blue one is messenger RNA. It get temp uh, all the uh, transcription from this DNA, and then they move to ribosome. This is a kind of uh, ribosome, which is a protein making machine kind of thing. So it carried the instruction from DNA and move, uh, bring it to this uh, ribosome and uh, with different uh, kind of amino acids present, this ribosome is making this chain, long chain of polypeptide. Okay, so one, uh, the messenger RNA migrates from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. Decoding the um, uh, messenger RNA sequence can be described as a unit of three nucleotide and it is called codon. So this is a kind of, uh, it carries all the information here and then uh, the protein synthesis take place. Okay, then the second part is the translation because uh, it got the message from there and uh, now this uh, polypeptide chain is ready. So translations involve three uh, processes, is initiation, and on elongation and terminations. So this is a messenger RNA binds to protein, which is called, a complex is called ribosome, which is a, a protein producing machine. And then the unique initiation code, even if it is U, A, U, G, it's, uh, what was, A was, oh. it was uracil and guanine, and A was um, adenine, okay determines the beginning point of translation. There are 64 different set of codons and only 20 amino acids. So if you want to see these, so these are uh, the codes and they make different, uh, basically it's a combination of three. So U, 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 U is uracil, uh, C, A, because in uh, RNA there is no thiamine. So instead of thiamine you have uh, uracil. So this is a kind of uh, codes which RNA carried from DNA and take it to the ribosome and according to the available uh, nucleotides, they make a polypeptide chain. This, then the uh, transfer RNA match each triplet on a messenger RNA to its uh, corresponding amino acid and elongate the new polypeptide chain synthesized on the ribosome. The ribosome moves from codon to codon along the messenger RNA. So then uh, you have need to terminate that polypeptide chain. So a release factor binds to the stop codon, terminating translation and releasing the complete polypeptide form to the ribosome. So there are three different termination codes. This is UAA, UAG, and UGA. Okay, so in this manner you can uh, 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 instruction is uh, RNA take instructions from DNA, move to the ribosome, ribosome uh, uh, collect those uh, nucleotides and make uh, proteins. And this, uh, there are 20 different kinds of amino acid, but there are many possibilities to have. So they uh, copied those instructions, they make a polypeptide chain, then they terminate it, and then that protein is ready for different kinds of functions for this. And that's it. Okay, Miguel, I was too quick. Thank you. So by the way, the slides I gave to Federica, they have few more slides, which I deleted <laughs> the last minute. So any question which I'm not so good, I can ask. Uh,